If you're about to start intermittent fasting, you probably have no idea what to actually expect. Today I'm going to be breaking down step by step the first 48 hours of what you can expect with intermittent fasting in today's video. All right guys, if you're new to my channel and you don't know who I am, my name's Autumn and I'm a certified clinical nutritionist with my master's nutrition human performance. On my channel, I'm typically talking about the science-backed and holistic methods that you can use in order to achieve your wellness dreams. So if you have a wellness goal in mind, make sure you subscribe. Okay, so how we're actually going to break this down is starting with the last bite of your last meal. That's how you will typically assess when your fasting period starts is when you have had your last bite of your last meal. So really your intermittent fasting experience starts the day before you would think it starts. It's like, let's say you eat dinner at seven and you're done by 7.30 p.m., then that means that your fasting window really starts at 7.30 p.m., which means that really the first 10 to 12 hours of a intermittent fasting period is going to be pretty similar to your normal routine for most people. I mean, going back to that 7.30 p.m. example, if you finish eating at 7.30 p.m. and you make it to 5.30 a.m., you already are 10 hours into a fasted period. And due to the naturally higher levels of cortisol, which is our stress hormone that we have earlier in the morning, it makes it so that more fuel is available so that you really shouldn't be hungry during this time. But really in this first 10 to 12 hours of your first intermittent fasting experience, the perks of intermittent fasting haven't really kicked in yet, which leads me into that next stage. So that 12 to 16 hours into your first intermittent fasting experience. At this stage, your body starts to eat itself which sounds a lot scarier than it really is. It's actually a really important process for overall health, wellness, weight loss goals. This process is called autophagy, which when you break it down in Latin, literally means self-eating. And this is a key example of how your body is always trying to achieve balance. And that phrase of balance has really taken on a lot of different meanings in the wellness community, but in scientific terms, balance is a really important aspect within the body. In physiology, we call this homeostasis. And when you break down this term, it's really simple. Homeo just means the same and then stasis as in stable. So same stable, keeping that stability or that balance. And there are a ridiculous amount of examples of this within the body. A really easy one that we're always talking about on this channel is our stabilizing blood glucose levels. Our body is always trying to keep it at that stable, healthy level, which is why when your blood glucose levels increase after a really high carbohydrate meal or high sugar meal, it pumps out a lot of insulin so that it can bring it back down to that normal level. Or on the flip side, when it dips down, it secretes cortisol to release more glucose into the blood supply to bring it back up. And we see this example with body temperature, bone maintenance, where we actually have osteoclasts and osteoblasts. So your bones are actually always tearing itself down in order to rebuild it. So in order to achieve this stability or this homeostasis or this balance, whatever it is that you wanna call it, we need to have simultaneously a breakdown and a building period. And with fasting, we're getting a little bit of that breakdown period. Because obviously when we're eating, we're building up. We're focused on digestion. We're focused on nutrient absorption. But when we're in that fasted state, this is when the body can shift gears and shift attention away from digestion and instead into repairing the body. So when you hit that 12 hour period of a fasted state, this is typically when that autophagy kicks in. And what autophagy is really doing is identifying those damaged cells or damaged mitochondria, breaking it down so that it can then create new healthier cells. So you can see why this is a really important concept, just why intermittent fasting is always really tied to long longevity because it's essentially a time where your body can take out the trash. It can get rid of what's not working or what's damaged in order to make way for what's new and what we can use to flourish. I mean, just to put this into like a typical example, if you were having a party, it wouldn't make sense to be cleaning up as the party is going. You want to wait till all the guests are gone so that you can actually efficiently clean your house. This is the same concept of what's happening inside your body. It doesn't really ever get this cleaning process when you are eating. It only gets it during that fasted state so that your body can direct all of the attention to those cleaning and repair mechanisms. In fact, there's even some really interesting research on how this cleaning mechanism of autophagy also is happening within the brain, within our neurons, which might be why a lot of people experience a decreased amount of brain fog when they are using intermittent fasting properly. Another house cleaning cleaning mechanism that occurs when you're in this fasted state directly ties to bloating and your GI tract. And this is a process called the migrating motor complex or the MMC. So this is essentially just a series of contractions and secretions that are happening within your small intestine to get out that left behind food and bacteria so that there's nothing left behind that could cause bloating. I mean, that's also why typically with intermittent fasting, even after just one day, some people will experience significant drops in their bloating because the cleaning crew within the GI tract is able to be turned 
on because this also just like with autophagy can really only happen during that fasted state you don't get this when you're eating so for some people they might experience this during that first 12 to 16 hours of their first intermittent fasting period others especially if you have a history of eating six seven eight times throughout the day it might take a couple days for this to really reactivate so you might see it after the second day or the third day or the fourth day etc and also during this 12 to 16 hour period you have some hormonal benefits as well namely your fat storing hormone insulin is going to naturally dip back down so when that's down your body's actually able to tap into fat burning mechanisms which if weight loss is a goal is a really good thing that's exactly what we want but also it's been found that growth hormone starts to increase and growth hormone is super important for protecting your muscles from breakdown but also helping with stimulating fat burning now if you're used to eating every few hours then you might still feel hungry on that first day because your body hasn't really become metabolically flexible yet which really just means that you haven't started to relearn how to use fat as fuel efficiently but really the more often you're using intermittent fasting and as long as you're easing into it according to your own needs and your own lifestyle then eventually your body will adapt get better at using fat as fuel and make it so that you are not hungry during your fasted state but if you are one of those people who are experiencing hunger during that fasted state, using keto coffee, keto tea, something along those lines is extremely useful to boost satiety and make it so that you aren't hungry. It's a really great beginner tool. Granted, you won't get those MMC benefits, but it'll help you with this transition period. So if you're looking for information on keto coffee, you can check out my recipe with this right here. Okay, so now we get into that 16 to 24 hour period. So depending on what you decide your window is going to be for your eating window and your fasting period, this could range. So at this point, you're actually eating. So you're in that fed state. So we have the fasted state and the fed state. And this is where your fast will be broken. Now I talk a lot in the complete intermittent fasting bundle protocols on making sure that you actually pick a window that fits both your lifestyle, your goals. So this really can vary. So if you're brand new to intermittent fasting, I really recommend that you check out the complete intermittent fasting bundle with the step-by-step -step details on how you can use intermittent fasting. I'll have that link down in the description below. Okay, so during this fed state where you have broken your fast, this is where your body is actually breaking down food and absorbing nutrients. So autophagy, the MMC, all of those cleaning processes are turned off. And this is really that flip side to the homeostasis or that balance that we we're talking about, where we can't always be in a fasted state and we can't always be in a fed state. We need to have this balance so that we can get the nutrients we need, but also get those cleaning mechanisms triggered as well. And depending on what you're eating during your window, this will make it so that it's either easier during your fasted period or it's a lot more difficult. So one common mistake I see a lot of times with a lot of beginners to intermittent fasting is that you just eat anything you want. You're not really paying attention to the blood glucose stabilizing foods or the foods that are going to make you satiated. But not only will this make you hungrier, but it'll ultimately work against a weight loss goal and an energy goal if either of those are goals of yours. Because with those fluctuating blood glucose levels, it'll make it so you have dips in blood glucose and make it so it spikes your hunger, especially spikes your sugar cravings. And this is why I really recommend that you always focus whenever you're going to be eating anything on highly satiating foods. So we always talk about protein, fat, and fiber. So especially for a breakfast, I personally love making a chia brekkie bowl, smoothie, egg scramble. Those are some of my favorites. Oh, also Greek yogurt bowl has been another really recent favorite of mine because if you aren't eating these satiating foods, then your blood glucose level is going to be going on a wild ride. You're going to be having highs in energy, then dips in energy. You're not going to have that stable blood glucose or stable insulin level, which means that'll be a lot harder for your body to tap into fat burning mechanisms. And you're just not going to feel as good. Nobody likes to feel hungry. It's not a fun feeling. <laughs> Okay, so now we enter into your second fasting period. So this is the 24 hours to 40 hours, roughly. Again, this could change depending on what you choose for your fasting window. So on this second day of intermittent fasting, if you've really properly eaten the types of foods that are going to stabilize your blood glucose level, keep you satiated, then you'll find that you likely feel a lot less hungry during your fasted period the second day than you did your first day. And in fact, you might even find that you have even more energy the second day, depending on how metabolically flexible your body is starting to become. Now, because there can be this ease and transition, depending on where you're starting at, this is why it's a really good idea to also ease back into your workouts. Because if you jump straight into a normal higher intensity training or a ton of fasted cardio when your body isn't metabolically flexible, it'll just really ramp up hunger because your body isn't able to tap into that steady state of fuel from your fat sources. So for some people, they feel great after that second day because their fat burning mechanisms have really started to turn on. And so incorporating a slightly more normal exercise 
exercise routine that you're already used to can be doable. This is where it's up to you. You have to determine what it is that's going to be best for you and your goals and where you're at right now in your intermittent fasting journey. Because ideally, working out in that fastest state is a really great time to exercise. Not only is it when your body is naturally going to be using more fat as fuel anyway, but we have the added perks of the increased growth hormone, which is a really important aspect for the muscle protection benefits. I personally typically work out in a fasted state probably about 97% of the time, but it is really important that you are adjusting it to your needs. I have a whole beginner to intermittent fasting and exercise video that I really recommend that you check out right here. Now, depending on your health history and where you're at right now, you also may just want to check with your functional medicine doctor or your GP to see what type of exercise will make sense for you, especially if you're using any medications. Okay, so now we get to that 40 to 48 hours period. So this is really your second eating window of that first 48 hours of intermittent fasting. What's great is that this is also your opportunity to adjust your meals from what you learned from the day before. If you notice that you're even more hungry during the second fasted period than you were the first, clearly you didn't get enough of one of those satiating types of foods. Or perhaps you ate too much of the foods that stimulate hunger like those refined carbohydrates or sugars. So this is where you can start to tinker with your meals to make sure that it's adjusted to your needs. And this can always be an evolving process as well. I find that I even change the amount I'm eating on any given day, depending on my stress levels, how much I slept, what type of intensity my exercise was. So this is where you can really adjust your eating based off of your needs on any given day as well. And the more often you use intermittent fasting, the more tools that you'll actually have at your disposal on how you can adjust to your needs. This is why I really recommend using the daily fasting journal within the complete intermittent fasting bundle, or just keeping track of what you're eating, how you're feeling, not necessarily a full blown food journal, but just keeping track of these types of signs. So your sleep, your energy, your bloating, these are all really important factors so you can continuously adjust your intermittent fasting protocol, but also your meals as well. And although there really isn't a one size fits all for intermittent fasting approach, if you are looking for some type of example of what to do in a day, you can check out what I do with the day of intermittent fasting on eating and exercise with this video right here. Also, if you're new to my channel and you love this science backed information, make sure you subscribe right here. Come out with new videos every Tuesday and Thursday. All right guys, thanks so much for tuning in and I'll see you in my next video.